Hello and happy Wednesday. I'm Kat Cricker. My pronouns are she, her. And um, we're continuing in Game Design Lab creating a bunch of uh, little pieces of a world that we're building together. We've been doing this since, um, gosh, was it the fall that we start, I started this? Um, yeah, so we've got little elements that have already been built. We started with an NPC um, and I think um, it was a really cute NPC, so we uh, just sort of continued building uh, the world for this NPC to inhabit. Um, we've got a um, monster already created, uh, a location. We even have our main villain. We thought we had an artificer villain, um, but it turns out there's even a bigger bad in the world. And this is a it's a fantasy world because uh, our little M NPC is a um, is a goblin artificer apprentice, but there's also like a modern element to it. Hi, Andy. Welcome. Sort of kind of trying to recap all the things that we've built in this little world of ours here. Um, it is a fantasy world, but there's definitely a, a more modern um, spin to it, I think the villain sort of wears these pinstripe suits um i think our our little goblin artificer dahlia wears essentially she's trying to get noise cancelling a headphone so she's wearing um earmuffs right now and so today um we've been building frederick serpentine as our um our sort of vampire sort of naga uh, yeah fantasy with player um he's sort of like a vampire but he's also got a lot of naga like qualities uh, particularly because he has a, a magical armband but i think there's also something something um probably in frederick and in this world that makes vampires more snake like so um, he's still a work in progress, and part of the part of the work that's um, being done is that he needs a lair. He needs a place to just hang out, and I didn't want his lair to just be like a castle. Um, so I'm trying to think of flavoring it so that it fits in this world. He's a he's a he needs a place to hang up his suit. Yes, and so he's you know he's a he's a business person um in in an import export way that's what we put down as his as his um form of employment he used to be a thief so i think wealth is probably uh, you know he wants power ultimately so i was thinking you know originally this morning i was like well let's let's do a layer today and I, I was thinking well could it be wizard's tower i don't know that doesn't seem right but then i was thinking well maybe in this world there could be um like potions factories and things like that and maybe this he lives in a potion in an abandoned potions factory that has been upgraded to a loft um it just seems like such a modern um <laughs> a modern type of um place to layer so that's what i'm thinking um, I'm open to ideas, so um, as always, because I love uh, I love the ideas that come out of chat. So, if you have other ideas um, right now, that's that's the the one I'm, I've I've got going in my in my head right now. Exposed brick, high walls, yeah, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, All right, so uh, we're gonna, I think we're gonna run with that. I'm gonna um, switch over to my journal so that you can see what I'm writing. So I've got here an old abandoned potions factory uh, that has been 
remodeled into a loft space. So yes, high ceilings, exposed brick, All right. I feel like I must have misspelled this in Canadian fashion here. Still getting used to not doing. Oops. I, I I do feel like Andy, there should be some like I don't know like maybe repurposed um, potions bottles that um, have been taken to be more decorative. <clears throat> and maybe like a a bottle stopper, an old timey bottle stopper or something. Oops. All right, so I wrote some old potions bottles are now decorative and old timey um, bottle stopper. What are they called? Oh my gosh, yes, the crates have to have been repurposed. Uh, hi, Socialist Pi. We are making a lair for uh, Frederick Serpentine and um, have decided that in keeping with our fantasy world set in a slightly like urban, a little bit more modern um, sensibility world, that he has taken over an old potions making factory that was abandoned and turned it into a loft. Um, and we're just uh, talking about the details, right? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what it's, um, you know, you put, uh, there's like a, I think there must be a device that you put corks into a bottle, right? Is it a cork press? Cork. How to cork a bottle. how to put corks in a bottle. I don't know. Does anyone know? <laughs> I, I, uh, I absolutely am blanking on how, because I, I have made homemade wine before, and I, but I, it, I'm completely drawing a blank on. It was so long ago. There's a device. Yes, there is a. It's like a. It's a type of press. I'm going into like research mode here. Uh, a corker. Bottle floor corker is what it's called. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Andy, for returning the search. <laughs> um, so I think we've got that. We've also got uh, um, old crates repurposed. as furniture. All right. So we have this, um, this, um, the start of a layer here, like the, the, the look and feel of it. Um, and uh, now we can go into a little bit more of the, you know, what what does it mean to have a layer specifically for uh, in D 5 e I think, you know, as I as I do game design lab, I do try to try to look at things from a from a bigger picture standpoint. So, you know, you can still use some of these elements in other um, in other game systems. But because 5e is what I'm um, familiar with and you know, as a as a game designer, that's what I generally have been working mostly in, um, besides board games. This is uh, I feel like this is sort of my area of expertise. So, um, this is what I I'm usually designing towards um, when we're um, when we're in game design lab. I might I might look at changing that at, at some future time, or maybe talking about some of my the projects that I'm working on personally. Um, at some point, um, because it's not it's it's not all five e. Um, some of it is like card games or um, other board games and things like that. So, um, but for now, we're building this world, um, this unnamed uh, city, for our uh, heroes and villains. And so, one of the things in five e is there are monsters, creatures, villains um, that have uh, what are called layer actions and layers. Sometimes they just have regional effects. Sometimes uh, they have, um, but sometimes they also have layer actions. And I'd like to give Frederick some layer actions um, because I think um, he's ultimately the big bad in this in this world, and um, the layer actions are very powerful. Um, but let's start um, by talking about what what this all entails. Um, so, and one of the things we can talk about too is, you know, it's um, uh, the regional regional effects first. So um, in an area where there is a monster layer, there's usually some sort of like, like, like negative energy around the layer. Um, I think you know there there are good aligned creatures as well, so there could be positive things. Like if there's a unicorn around, it it changes things as well. But there's like this energy that radiates from the layer, and it causes effects in the region. Thus, you know, it being called regional effects, um, and it creates um, a, a few different things uh, in the area. So I think in the in our case here. Because we have a snake theme, um, I for sure want to include, um, you know, more snakes present in the area. What is going on here? Regional effects. Why did I spell regional like that? All right. Um, hello, Jane. How are you? Uh, happy Wednesday. We're building a lair for Frederick Serpentine, and it is a <laughs> abandoned potions factory that has been remodeled into a fancy loft space. Um, and now we're talking about um, regional effects. Um, I, Jane, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I, I've had a couple, couple rough weeks of like, first, first of all, my, 
preschooler uh, was sick for a while and he still got this like lingering cough and then I was sick last week so I'm, I'm a little tired but um, I'm happy to be here chatting with everyone it just makes me feel um, like I'm, like I'm a little productive um, let's see regional effects uh, more snakes Obviously, the language here has to be uh, a little bit more specific when we're when we're in um, uh, D and D five E, but it's easy enough to sort of um, look at uh, how things are worded in uh, like D and D Beyond or one of the source books, and then change change things up so that you are sort of following a style. Um, this is particularly more important as a as a new designer in this space um, versus um, just doing homebrew. Um, usually, it's like a one mile radius. It could be five hundred feet or meters or things like that. Right? Thank you. I will accept the hugs and positive vibes. <laughs> Magic dampening effects. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I like that. Um, because nagas are creatures that, um, devote their time to, um, creating new spells and sort of like overpowering other, other creatures. And I like the idea that magic can be dampened in some way. Um, I was going to put water. Magic dampening. Um, and I think uh, in this case we could um, we could take this into the layer actions too and do something uh, a little bit more powerful once once they're actually in the layer. Um, else maybe it's warmer in the area because um for the snake side of things anti-garlic <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, Jane, that's really cool. The, um, the layer maybe being able to squeeze in, uh, and Frederick, Frederick does have, um, because he can transform into a snake, he can, um, um, he has a swimming speed, so water is good. Um, I think um, I think for the regional effects we're gonna just leave it at this and then move into the layer actions because I or yeah uh, yeah layer actions because um, I think we're getting more into that terrain now <laughs> difficult terrain um, so we have um, for regional effects we've got there's more snakes in the area 
there's like a some sort of ma magic dampening effect and it's warmer within a set radius of, of this layer. Now we're gonna look at um, layer actions. Oh, oh also regional effects. Um, one thing to keep in mind is like uh, if the creature in the layer um, ceases to exist, dies, um, the uh, some of the effects actually fade over the course of you know a set um, a number of days, and usually you roll uh, uh, um, like three d ten or something um, days. Or you can roll other other days as well, but um, it once once the creature doesn't have its hold on on the area anymore it's all that just slowly dissipates so um can write something about that um regional effects regional effects and um if the Pick dies after three to ten days. Okay, so now we're going to move into layer. I'm going to put this on a new page. Layer actions. Okay, so. Layer actions take uh, can happen when a creature is fighting within its layer, um, and it um, it just sort of like takes from the powers of, that surround it uh, and channel that into an action, and um, um, so generally how, how it plays out is, you know, on initiative count 20, um, the, the monster, the villain can take one layer action to cause one of usually three um, effects. Um, some rules around layer actions though are, um, you can't repeat an effect until, um, all the other ones have been used sometimes, or um, it can't use the same effect two two times in a, in a row, um, like the same effect. Um, sorry, two rounds in a row. Um, just some some things to keep in mind. But these are generally pretty powerful things. Um, so I like the idea of um, you know. Maybe there's um, there's some way to um, to do a counter spell or um, constrict or flood an area. Um, I think all three of those options are are really cool. Normal to navigate slimy snake terrain. Venom uh, like a poisonous uh, effect would be really good too because um, Frederick is a poisonous um, does does turn into a poisonous snake well Jane I think um, I think that layer um, the layer actions that rule you can I think you can play around with um, but generally you know you want to be able to to sort of balance it, right? So like you, you don't want to be able to like spam um, three really powerful things uh, at a um, back to back to back. Like if, if for example, if, if Frederick could polymorph um, as a layer action, it would be, I don't know, like it would be really rough to be able to polymorph like an entire party, right? <laughs> All right, so um, layer can, uh, let's see, we've got 
constrict. It's not what I'm, how am I gonna phrase this? Um, yeah, exactly, right? That would be, that would be a terrible, terrible thing to happen. All right. Um, I'm just going to write constrict or poison. What other ideas do we have here? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to say flood area. And then I feel like there needs to be some sort of magical effect as well. Um, and I mean like a, a magic um, interference sort of effect, because if, if in the regional effect, it's sort of like magical dampening, maybe it is more, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Now, when it's all grouped together, it's more intense, more um, um, condensed, I guess. Um, and so, what do we do here? Um, this could, the flood area, I'm going to just add some notes here. It's difficult terrain. Uh, but maybe we, it can also knock prone. So there's a DC check or a saving throw. Required. Um, what else? I'm gonna look at some spells, I think. Oops. There could be something like a dispel magic, maybe. Oh, nice. The ground opening up and trying to swallow the person. That's amazing. Uh, so charm, uh, we have, we actually have um, um, in Frederick's uh, armband, there is a, he's already got a lot of like charm um, magic there. Um, Snake charming kind of thing, but snakes doing the charming. Yeah, exactly. So his armband uh, does has um, some of that charming and dominate person type of uh, powers. Um, uh, 
Although, it is a good thought though, because um, maybe when you enter, when you enter the lair, um, you have to make some sort of um, saving throw uh, to not be charmed just being in the lair. Um, I could do that. Maybe that goes into regional effect, though. Because this is not an action. This is just a, a thing that happens. OK, you need to. All right, so that will be um, charm. Let's go look at spell. Wisdom saving throw. Savings so for the being not prone. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, Lair for Frederick Serpentine. Um, so it's an old abandoned potions factory that has been remodeled into a loft space. High ceilings, exposed brick, uh, some old potion potions bottles are now decorative. There's an old timey bottle floor corker, also decorative. Old crates have been repurposed as furniture, and we have regional effects. Uh, one is more snakes. Uh, two, there's some sort of magic dampening field of some sort. Um, it's warmer within a certain radius of the lair. Um, you also have to make a wisdom saving throw when entering the lair or be charmed, and the regional effects uh, end if Frederick dies after 3d 10 days. For layer actions, we have uh, constrict or poison um, sort of effect. We have a flood area which causes difficult terrain and can knock characters prone if they fail a strength saving throw. And there's also a dispel magic um, action. So this is very good. Um, I think um, what we can do is actually dig a little deeper now and I'm going to move some of this content around so that I have the space. All right, so if we're going to constrict or poison, let's see what we do here. Just go look for inspiration in some spells and monsters to see what we can um, come up with here. So a
wondering if we could maybe maybe Frederick gets to decide whether it poisons or constricts. Or maybe it's um, like spirit snakes, like um, they're just magical snakes that that appear. It's not necessarily the 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 space itself, but it's magical snakes because then they could um, target different characters in the room. Um, Yeah, snake spirit guardian type thing, because that's that's sort of the vibe of what the 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 naga has going for it. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So we're gonna oops, put here that these are spirit guardian snakes. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing, right? The hip, hypnotic eyes. Um, let's put a look up. Oops, I need. Make. So I want to make sure that this is powerful enough. So we're going to get um, All right, I'm looking at the giant coral snake and it's got a really interesting uh, bite here. I don't think that these guardian snakes will necessarily bite, but they do. Um, I think maybe it's gonna be a different type of damage. Maybe it's poison, poison damage. Um, and then uh, the target has to just uh, succeed on a constitution saving throw or be stunned. Um, other uh, and on a failed save, the target begins to hallucinate. Um, that's uh, that's pretty powerful. Um, I'm gonna just put a note here. Um, C giant coral snake. I have to um, look at the numbers again for um, because Frederick right now is only a 13 uh, is a CR 13. Um, I mean, I'm saying only, but um, but we have to be mindful of the out, uh, damage output um, on um, the attacks. So I'm not going to write any specific numbers right now. Um, then we have a Flood area. Let's get rid of this here. Okay. <laughs> Trust me, exactly, Jane. All right, so with the flood area, um, I think this one's pretty straightforward. It becomes difficult terrain, um, and there's a potential to be knocked prone. Um, so we'll have to look at what the numbers are for uh, what a strength saving throw would be. Um, and then there is Dispel Magic, and this is the one that I will try to 
don't have Frederick's stats right in front of me right now. Um, but I'm going to take a look at Respell. Dispel Magic to get some flavor here. All right. All right, so um, when we're looking at Dispel Magic, it is a third level spell, um, instantaneous, one action, 120 feet range. <clears throat> and in the case of this spell, it is uh, choose one creature, object, or magical effect within range. Any spell of third level or lower on the target ends. For each spell of fourth level or higher on the target, make an ability check using your spell casting ability. DC equals 10 plus the spell's level. A successful check, the spell ends. And then at higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of fourth level or higher, you automatically end the effects of a spell on the target if the spell's level is equal uh, to or less than the level of the spell slot you use. So because this is not going to be cast as a spell, we have to rework um, this idea into an action. And again, this is <clears throat> trying to approach this from the angle of starting out as a as a game designer, um, trying to um, look for ways to um, take inspiration from what's available using your resources um, or sources and um, creating something maybe new and interesting. Um, so yeah, with Dispel Magic, like I said, you can't, um, it's not going to be cast as a spell, it is a layer action, so we need to like rework a, a bunch of this and make sure that we don't just put like what the DC equals and things like that. We have to be very specific in the language. Which is probably going to require me pulling up Frederick's stat, and I don't think I've got time to do that. Um, All right. Um, let's see. What else can we do here? Um, I think one thing I want to add to regional effects is that if if um, in this whole charm section is if um, if you succeed on on not being charmed, you're immune to the effects for like 24 hours. All right. Um, oops. This is going to be 120 feet range. Um,
I'm going to have to go around into my documents and try to find all of Frederick's stats. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll skip this part. Um, what else do we want to talk about in the layer? Um, I'm not really sure if there's anything else that um, I need to cover here. Um, need to put the um, their actions and um, sorry, and note. So I'm going to say, um, can't repeat. Effect. Um, what is it? Two rounds in a row. Okay, until all have been used. Can't. Two in a row. Can a, a layer have a s single spell trigger when the person enters the space. Uh, yeah, so I think that's uh, essentially what, what we're doing with the with the charm um, in the regional effects. Um, it has to be in the regional effects because a layer action is like specifically a layer, uh, like an, an action, sorry. Um, so with the regional effects, we put in here that um, it's essentially charm person is, um, is what we're doing. So when somebody first enters the space, um, you have to, uh, or the layer, you have to make this wisdom saving throw. Um, and essentially, what happens is you're saving again. You're making a save against um, being charmed, um, or the charm person spell. And then separately, the layer actions are things that happen um, on an initiative count uh, of, uh, of 20. Um, so, um, and that's when, that's when, um, that's when Frederick gets to take a, an extra action. Um, so it's specifically going to be um, this whole spirit garden, guardian snake thing, or flooding the area, or dispelling some magic that's that's taken place. Um, I think I'm. I might actually. I think it's. I mean, it's probably unlikely that no magic is used, but. Um, that seems like a loophole to get around all the layer, layer actions if um, you can't repeat an effect until all have been used. I think I might remove that because I think this might be um, somewhat of an outlier situation. But you can't repeat two in a row. All right. Um, I'm going to take a look at other other layers just to see 
if I've missed anything. I don't think so. We've got the descriptions of layer. We've got the layer actions. We've got the regional effects. We've got um, um, a note about when the regional effects end. I think that's I think that's it. Um, yeah. So I I'm going to be adding uh, these notes to Frederick's um, monster stat block. Um, which is available on DNT Beyond. Um, so if you can't access the link, uh, let me know in Discord or um, Patreon, and uh, I, I'll look into what, how how um, how I can change how I can fix that. But um, hopefully you can see it um, and eventually make use of uh, Frederick. <laughs> I like his layer a lot too. I, I'm I'm really enjoying. Um, you know how we've sort of built this world. It's a little bit, it's a little bit different than just, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just like a, like, medieval fantasy world. I like that it's a little bit more, um, like set in a closer time period to now. Um, I, I don't know. Like maybe it's got more modern sensibilities, but in a fantasy world, I like that. Um, so I think it's, uh, I think it's been a lot of fun building out this world and, uh, this villain as well. And I don't know what we're going to do next week. Um, cause I think we're basically done with Frederick here. Oh my gosh. An illustration of Frederick would be awesome. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad you're finding that, uh, this is, uh, easier, um, I, I do love um, collaborating um, on projects and it definitely, I don't know, it just gives more inspiration, I feel like, like a source of inspiration. Um, and I just feel like creatively it's very helpful as a as a writing exercise to just work, work on things like this. So I appreciate you all um, being in chat here and giving your ideas. I think, uh, I think we've built something pretty cool. Uh, anyway, um, I am going to continue um, my cross-stitch uh, stream on Friday. Uh, as I said, uh, for the next month or so, I'm going to be uh, um, doing this a little bit earlier. Did I change my Streamlabs thing? I did. Um, very, very slowly making progress on this. Um, I may have been distracted by Hello Kitty Island Adventures this week because I was just sort of feeling really tired and from last week um, being ill and just, I don't know, didn't feel like I was concentrating. But I have started to make my way up here. I, as you can see, there's a couple of like little bits here too. Um, so I can count out where the rest of the bits go. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm going to be working on on Friday from 1 to 2. My stream on Friday is um, 1 to 2 Pacific, and that's going to be just a little... It, it's an hour earlier earlier than usual until, I don't know, sometime in March. Little hints of what's to come on that, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to completing it, and then um, I think I'll... So that that's an over-the-garden wall cross-stitch, and I think... Uh, the next one will probably be Spirit Fairer because I have a, a, a nice pattern for the little flowers um, from all the spirits. Um, we'll see. Um, I feel like there's still quite a ways to go for this one. There's so many leaves. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully I'll see some of you on Friday. Otherwise, I'll see you online um, continuing our uh, story bot story. Um, and I'm also, I'll see you, some of you on Monday as well doing, um, I'm going to try to finish uh, Spires and Hildegard. Um, thank you all again, and I hope you have a lovely rest of your week. All right, take care. <laughs>